Well, good morning, all. Welcome to the first allocator governance call taking place on February 20th. Let's take a look at what we have on the agenda for today. Very short call. What we're hoping to do with the time is give you an overview of what's taking place with ratification. So if there's any final questions for verification, we'll go over it on this call, as well as outline a little bit about what's happened behind the scenes. Then we'll talk about onboarding, which will be taking place after the 05 March rollout. Um, there's going to be plenty of time at the end, so if there's any questions or discussions, plenty of time. Feel free to drop them in chat, or at the very end of this call, we'll have a call out for it. So let's take a look. This is the call taking place on 20th February. The next call is scheduled for March 5th. We post all these calls in the shared calendar right here, so if you add this, it'll give you an update on when the calls are taking place and let you know when to dial in. If you are missing last week's call, we spent a lot of time going over who was selected for the allocators, talking about meta pathways, what was the criteria, and really deep dive into the metrics. I kept this slide in this week's deck, so if you still wanted to go back and check it, one helpful link on the 85 allocators that were selected. So let's dive into what's taking place in onboarding right now. So let's start with timelines first. So if you're not tracking, next week is ETH Denver taking place in Denver, Colorado. There's going to be a lot of talks. We'll be recording these sessions to make sure they're available. And Galen will be leading a talk talking about the allocator process, how that really unfolded, what are next steps for the program. So it should have a lot of great information that's coming. We'll make sure to get that to you just in case you don't want to fly to Colorado <laughs> to be there live for the event. Then after that, as far as next steps, once all the ratification is final, then we'll talk a lot about this on the call, we'll start the onboarding. And we'll talk a lot about the onboarding on the call, but you should start to see that data cap move right around early March, once all the onboarding and ratification is complete. And we'll dive into what those steps are in this call so that you're aware. So first off, if you've got an email from me in the last week or so, it was verifying a lot of the contact information. And we'll talk about that. But one of the things you might have noticed was a token code. So notaries that were around in the fourth round, this is very familiar. If you're a new allocator, just wanted to take a minute and talk about what this token code is used for. So when you apply to be an allocator on GitHub, you submit an application and it has your name, it has your contact information. What we do is we reply back to that with this very unique token code. It's unique to every organization. And this way, if a member of the organization messages us on Slack, we know that we're dealing with the right person, almost like if you get a verification code when logging into your bank. So if you do message me on Slack for the first time, even though we've been talking on GitHub or we might've been talking on email, I'll ask you, hey, Will, thanks for the message. Love it, happy to look into this. Just for transparency, can you please tell me what the token code is? And this will be in the email that we send. And then I'll link this to your Slack profile so I know I'm actually talking with the organization and not anybody else who just might wanna step in. So you'll see more about this, but just to answer this initial question, that's why we have the token codes that are set up for you. The second thing is if you apply to be an allocator, you've gotten an email from either last week or coming through. And what this email looks like is essentially verifying all the information that you put in your error table. This is like your name, your address, your country, all of that, as well as your token code. So I'll be asking if anybody didn't get this email, I've been keeping a list of the people that we haven't had a reply to, but if you have gotten this email, you'll see needed updates at the very bottom. I'd say a big, large chunk, nothing was needed other than just verifying that you received it, that everything looks good to go. If there were individual actions that we needed from your organization, it should be highlighted below and just reply back. The most common is having a human who's in control of the wallet. So some organizations might just have a first name or the organization per the sanctions requirements that go through on these diligence checks, we have to have a human. So it needs to be like John Smith. And that way we have somebody that we can look into. The second was verifying the organization. So if you said you worked for Microsoft and you represented Microsoft as an organization, but your email was a Google Gmail address, we're looking for more information on like, how do you connect to that organization? The easiest way is if you have an email. So Kevin at Microsoft.com. If you don't have something like that, we'll need a picture, a business, some documentation that shows that you are connected with that organization. 
So if you have any questions or you got that specific email, free to reach out to me on Slack, GitHub, or email. But again, what we need to do is have a verification that you actually speak on behalf of that organization that you link to it. And then with that contact information, we take all of these and we verify it and we run this through a sanctions check. So that's going to be finalizing this week on Friday. So if you have not provided like a name or an organization, please do so by Friday. We'll be doing a final cleanup next week before we send out all the ratification steps. So again, you should have an email from the foundation. If not, feel free to reach out or let me know on this call and I'll make sure that the contact information we have for you is correct. The reason why we have to do these sanctions check is we essentially run these through a service that then takes everyone's individual name and says, are they cleared to operate essentially with US interests? So this is important. This is why we have to verify your organization and why we have to verify the human that is in control of the ledger. If you have more than one person, like some organizations do, we'll need each individual's name and we'll need to know their name and their country. So again, thank you for the back and forth on emails as we pulled this out. If you have any additional questions, please let me know and I'll get that too. All right. Hey, next steps for onboarding. Here's what it looks like. This is the same slide we used last week. And essentially what we're going to start doing is having dedicated calls, dedicated videos, and dedicated guides. And really these guides are designed just to kind of outline the basics of using the program. They're written for somebody that's stepped in, and this might be their first time serving as a notary allocator, and how the data cap process works. There's tooling, like the registry, where you can find application. There's comments in GitHub, realizing how to read those and action those specifically. There's communications in Slack and email, how to understand those. And then I think one of the most important parts that we'll cover in this is how do you do your verification with applications? to make sure that you're staying in line with the bookkeeping plan that you put forward. And this is important. If you say you're going to keep a log or you're going to keep a check, you really need to be diligent about this. So if there is a question that comes back in three months about the trust and transparency aspect of compliance, you've really kind of done your diligence early. So we'll spend a lot of time covering that. I realize that everybody learns differently. So that's why we're going to have different methods. We'll have live talks. So Q&A back and forth. We'll have videos if you just want to have that run, as well as a checklist guide that you can go to that will detail the steps and common questions. So be on the lookout for this. We're planning to roll this out after the Lunar New Year and after ETH Denver, which makes it probably early March that everything's ready to go for you on that. And then all of that feeds into these compliance checks that will be required by each organization functioning. Once that initial data cap goes out, you will then be distributing it. And you'll be distributing it within the bookkeeping and allocation plan that you put in your application. What will be done is a verification check. If you say you're going to give X number of PIBs over a certain timeline to certain customers, and we see it go out in one big tranche without any diligence, that's going to be this cause for like a review. Hey, are you keeping in line with how you said you were going to operate? If not, then we're going to postpone that additional tranche of data cap. If so, great job. Everything looks well. Here's the next data cap to come out. So that first round of data cap will be released in early March. But with the huge caveat that please be very mindful on that distribution plan, because if there's deviations between the diligence outlined and what we see in real world, it can lead to this audit and that can lead to delays in future data cap being issued. So with that, those are all the updates that I had from just the foundation side, from the tooling side. It's a very quiet week on the back end. We're working very quickly and hard on making sure that all this information is updated for you 85 allocators that are all set. So with that, I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions, blocks, or any topics they'd like to flag. The floor is yours. Hi, sorry. Hi, Kevin, this is Kenneth. Uh, I just wanted to clarify again that this Friday, uh, will be the submission for the reply to the emails. Kenneth, if I'm understanding you correctly, to get the information you're asking, should you reply to the emails or send it somewhere else? Uh, reply to the emails by Friday because the uh, time is a bit uh, tight on my end uh, those few days. You know what? It's probably the same for many folks with the holiday going on. There's no deadline of Friday. 
But if you got that, anything that we're missing by early next week, that'd be ideal where you really start to get into like the danger zone of like not hearing back. If by say the 28th, 29th of February, if we still haven't heard back and we haven't received that information, we'll complete all of the diligence checks without yours. We'll have to put it in a holding to kind of circle back. So if you were to mentally think, okay, I should get this all by the 28th, that should give you a week and one day. Would that kind of work for you and your bandwidth? Uh, yep, that will help. But uh, yeah, I will try my best to actually push to get them completed uh, by this week. Thank you very much. Wonderful. And it should be quick, Kenneth. I don't have yours right in front of me, but just human's name, verify your ledger address and make sure that your organization matches. You should be all set. All right. Thank you. Any problems, let me know. Question in chat, Kenneth asks, is the Airtable attendance still going on? No, we haven't set that up here for the next round of allocators. Once we complete the onboarding, then we'll implement some system to capture and collect that. So Kenneth, good question. No, there's no Airtable sign-in for today. Right. If anyone doesn't have any topics, one of the Slack threads in the public Slack came from this data application. It was an Enterprise Fill Plus. It's a large data set. The organization's coming through. It's been around for a couple of months. And essentially what they're waiting for is a second round of signature that they haven't been able to find anybody. So if you are still an Enterprise Fill Plus, I'm going to link this here in the chat. They are looking to ideally get this data cap signed before the early March timeline, which is tricky with the transitions taking place and a lot of the Enterprise Fill Plus standing up their own allocators going forward. But if you are still on the Enterprise Fill Plus, I see a few on the call right now. This application was looking for a review. I think it's had some signatures in the past. It just needs that second one here. And GP asks in chat, what's going to happen to the LDN and the EFIL Plus after the end of February? So great question. The kind of rough timeline that we've discussed is once the new allocators are stood up and they start receiving their data cap and they're onboarded, there will be a sunset on the Enterprise Fill Plus and there'll be a sunset on the LDN. And then those allocators will then be allocating their data cap based off that. So you should see that sunset take place right around the same time that the initial data cap goes out. I'm hesitant to give just a very specific date because with ETH Denver and then the onboarding and the ratification, that might change by a couple of days. But if you were to kind of have in your head early March, you're going to be right in line for kind of seeing those go. Yeah. And jumping in here, um, the LDN, the large data set notary, we will sunset that multi-sig address, we will ask the root key holders to remove the remaining data cap from that notary multi-sig, same as the e-fill notary multi-sig. We will not be pushing messages um, to remove remaining client data cap. Um, so if a client has received data cap for, you know, previously from the LDN or the e-fill, um, we're not planning on doing a sort of blanket removal of all old um, data cap at this time. So we'll just be, the plan right now is to have the root key holders remove the data cap from the notaries. Does that answer your question about what will happen? And then um, K Ray, uh, Faye had a question of whether or not we received their email. Uh, um, <clears throat> if you could check on that. I think we did um, from a quick glance, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm checking now.
But yeah, I emailed you on the yesterday morning again at 9.30, and I don't have a reply since then. So if you've written back after 9.30 California time yesterday, I have not received it. I'll follow up with you in the email thread in Slack to see. But you should have an yeah. email. <clears throat> we'll follow up directly because I'm seeing I'm seeing something, um, uh, but it's coming to a different inbox. So we will follow up with you, Faye. Buddy, I'll make that call one last time. If there's anything on your mind, open forum, open floor. Sal, I see you on the call. Hello, thanks for coming. If there's anything that brought you here, again, floor is yours, bud. Oh, no, this, this is exciting. We certainly got some questions we, we need to ask, but uh, we, we've got a forum with, uh, you know, Kevin and team, with the EFIL team um, coming up. I think it might be in the next hour or so. So I just wanted to jump on this, see what's, see what's going on, but we'll... Uh... We'll tackle those questions when we have uh, a smaller team in front of us. But thank you. I, I did notice that there were some allocators here that are doing two copy solutions. Is that a, is that a correct assumption? From um, yeah, I yeah. think you know, Kevin, yeah. we'll we'll have that conversation internal, and then uh, absolutely, I you know love to jump on and have a have a wider conversation with the community if required. So thank you. Yeah, uh, we set in the rubric two plus was sort of the uh, lowest level. Um, and so a number of different teams said they would be supporting two plus copies um, at uh, two plus destinations. Um, and some of those teams also said private and encrypted as well as public and open. Um, so there's kind of a spread there. I think off the top of my head, I think it was... Uh, I think it was either 10 or 12 allocator pathways that reported out as doing two plus copies. Um, so, yep. Yeah, I did. That was kind of the goal with the with the rubric being laid out the way that it was. We we didn't we didn't expect everyone needed to get a five on every question in order to get approved because that would be, you know, and we've had we've gotten this feedback from people, which was by design. Uh, we don't want all of the allocators to look the same. And so if everyone answers the same way with like all the same design, then that's, you know, we're not getting more diverse pathways. So it's better for us to see ones where people are saying, yeah, we are going to do two plus copies over here, but we're going to do this kind of, you know, automated bidding or this kind of smart contract backup. And so what are, what are the ways that they can, you know, these pathways can stand out? Yeah, no, that that's great. Uh, you know, that that's a positive for us because we've been sort of pushing that as well. Uh, you know, from a, an enterprise perspective, I mean, it's great, right? Having multiple copies out there, but for some organizations, it's like, you know, we we don't want five copies of our data out there. We want, you know, a couple of copies, two plus, uh, out there. And um, so those, those are some of the things that we're trying to, you know, some of the challenges that we have. I noticed Kevin's here as well uh, on the call, but yeah, we'll 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 take this more internal and then bring it up to the to the community as required. Thank you. All right, Galen, any final thoughts before we thank everyone? No, I don't think so. Looking forward to, looking forward to ETH Denver, see who we'll uh, see in person next week. It'll be great. Wonderful. Thanks for your time, everybody. The second we'll call. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good time in Denver. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. Cheers. Bye bye. Well, hello. Welcome to the second allocator governance call of 20 February. Let's take a look at the agenda. So, very light meeting. You know, a lot of the community is out for the holiday break right now. So, this is meant to be a check in, answer any questions anybody may have on the ratification that's going on board. 
and then just kind of brief you on what next steps to expect in March. So if this call is like the first, this should be relatively quick. If there was any topics that you wanted for discussion, we'll have lots of time at the end for anything that might come up. So with that quick check-in, this is the 20th of February. Next call is gonna happen on 05 March. In the slide deck, which is posted in Slack, it's a link to this calendar. If you follow that, they'll show up on your calendar and you can always see when these meetings are taking place. As a quick reminder, we announced the allocators selected in the last governance call that took place. If you missed that call for any reason, or you just wanted to grab the link, we include it in this deck as just a friendly way to reference that and come back again. Quick, quick, simple. Let's talk about the onboarding. So first is the timelines. So right now, next week, there's going to be ETH Denver taking place. So a majority of the governance team will be flying out to ETH Denver. Galen will be giving a talk. So we'll take that talk. We'll record it. We'll make sure that it's posted for all of you. But there'll be a lot of updates around the community. Maybe if there's some time, Galen can kind of give some highlights later on in the call. After ETH Denver, the governance call on March 5th, we're going to release a lot of the information on what does the onboarding process look like. So those of you that were alloc excuse me, notaries in the fourth round, you remember that we had a guide like how to set up your wallet, how to use the registry, how to really navigate the program. The intent is with this one to have a much more robust checklist. So essentially, when you receive a request from DataCap, what tools do you use? How do you verify your compliance? And we'll talk more about that on the call, but you could expect to look forward to more documentation coming in around the March 5th timeline. For those of you that got an email from me, thank you so much. We'll talk about the responses later, but one of the questions was, hey, what is the token code? The reason why you see a token code in the email, it's so when I email on behalf of Filecoin Foundation, I know who I'm talking with because I have your email from your GitHub application. But when it comes to Slack, there's no real easy way to verify that I'm talking with someone from the organization or someone that just makes a handle the same way. So the token code is almost like a pin if you had a verification. And if I talk to you on Slack, it just might be like, hey, what is the token code that I emailed you? And this is a really easy way just to verify your accounts. So no action. But if we start up a new Slack conversation, I'll ask you for that token code just to make sure I'm talking with the right person. In the verification emails that you've been receiving, we're looking to confirm some of the basic information. So essentially, number one is, do you have your ledger? And is it the same ledger that you signed up with or has there been a change? Number two is, per some of the regulations that come down, we have to verify who's been working in the program. So this means that we need to perform a sanctions check on not just the organization, but the human that controls the ledger as well. That's why in an application, we need a first and a last name. So some of the applications might just say Kevin with no last name. So you've got an email from me. If you look at the highlighted part of the email, that's the information I'm looking to confirm. Either we don't have the full name on file or the second is the organization. So if you say that you're representing you know, Microsoft and your email is coming from Yahoo, some of the questions will be like, if you don't have an email from your organization, what do you have that has your name and the organization's name on it to kind of verify that you are representing that organization? So you can be right back. If it's a problem, kind of spell it out. I'll help work with you. Otherwise, I've seen business license paperwork. A lot of that will do just fine. If you have any exceptions, just let me know in the thread and I'll help you with that. And then lastly, it's just verifying the contact information is correct. So what we found in the past is that somebody might fill out an application, move forward, for whatever reasons their email gets turned or changed. So when you get that email from us, please just reply back, hey, received, acknowledged, this is the best contact information. And this way that we know, great, we can get a hold of you for it. And for those sanctions check, just like I mentioned earlier with the first and last name, if we don't receive a first and last name for the organization, then what that means is I can't perform the sanctions check. Why this is important is because by the end of next week, what we hope to do is have everything ratified and completed so we can start the onboarding process. So my worry for some organizations is we don't have a first name, a last name, we don't have the ledger set up. The governance team takes all this action and then we leave someone behind. They won't be able to finish their onboarding until we do the next open enrollment in late Q2, early Q3. So please, if you haven't had a first name, check the email. Just make sure we have that information. Last, onboarding. So what to expect for onboarding? 
there's been a lot of new tooling, new registry, new CID bot, new AC bot, a lot of these fundamentals that go into like, how do you actually allocate the data cap? As well as you in your application spelled out a very detailed diligence plan. How will you track that you're ensuring trust and transparency with these applications? So with this onboarding, we'll spell out how to use the tooling, how do you make sure that you're performing your diligence? The plan for the onboarding is to have videos, live talks, and written documentation. So hopefully we'll cover whatever method you learn best in, and you could reference that going forward. So again, probably the most critical takeaway from this call is that you should have received an email from me, would have come from philplus at phil.org, and I'm looking to verify all the information needed for the compliance check. So if you haven't received an email from me, please message here in chat, message me on Slack, and then I can go from there. So I think I've got everybody who's messaged me recently today. You should be all set. If you haven't had a confirmation email from me, though, please let me know and we'll get you all set up. So with that, that's kind of all the updates we have. I'll open the floor up for anything that's on your mind. Hello. 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 Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Floor is yours. Uh, uh, I'm Lindsay from Dio, and our organization didn't receive the verification email. So, can you resend us? I will be checking in Slack later. I appreciate you coming to the call. Yes, I got a return to sender on your message. I was going to leave you a comment in GitHub. If you message me on Slack, either during the call or after, I'll work with you. There's a couple profiles that have the same name, so just making sure I'm talking with the right one for Big Frog. Okay, thank you. Yeah, great question. Thanks for asking that. Hey, Joss, Phoenix, I see your question. It's like, hey, I got a new ledger since I filled out that application. No problem at all. The best way to do it would be two things. Double tap yourself. Leave a comment in your GitHub application. Makes it transparent and open. And yes, sending that email to philplus at phil.org. What I'm doing is I'm taking all of these, all the updates, and putting them in one big spreadsheet. So it's got that collection. So Joss, if you've already sent that email, sounds great. I'll give you an act back probably tomorrow and let you know that everything's been set. All right, all right. I'll make one last call. If there's anything on anyone's mind, complete floor is yours. <laughs> 